Hey folks and welcome to the channel for a beginner's guide to V Rising. Now in this video I'll aim to tell you all that you need to know when stepping into the world of Vardoran for the first time, arming you with the tips and tricks you need to make your experience as smooth as possible. I'll do my best not to spoil any key parts of the experience in this one, but do keep in mind that I will be giving tips for various mechanics and early game progression, as well as showing a little bit of footage from one or two of the boss fights here and there. If you find the video useful for learning a bit more about V Rising, please do consider dropping it a like and subscribing to the channel. I'd love to make more content on this game and you doing this helps me see if people are up for more videos just like this one. Right, so with that, let's jump into the first things that you'll need to know. When you first start the game, you'll arise from your deathly slumber in a crypt where you'll go through a quick walkthrough of the basic controls. And at the top left of your screen is where you'll see your current quest, which is going to stick with you through the course of your experience in V Rising to keep you on track. If you're ever stuck with what to do next, that's where to look. You'll then leave the crypt and enter a graveyard, which is where my first tip for new players comes in. I'd recommend staying close to this graveyard until you get to the stage where you'll start building your base. Most of your early stage crafting quests are going to require bones, and lucky for you, this graveyard will be laden with the skeletons and pile of bones that you can smash up for loot. I'd also recommend grabbing some to take with you before you move on, as this is likely to be the easiest source of bones you'll come across for quite some time. Now when you do leave the graveyard, there's a good chance that it'll be daytime, and if it is in fact daylight out, try to stick to the shade. Spending more than a few seconds in direct sunlight will cause you to burn up and eventually perish. And in V Rising, nighttime lasts longer than daylight, and time passes fairly quickly. I'd recommend spending your daytime hours gathering resources around your base at the start of the game, and spending the nighttime doing activities further afield. I'd encourage new players to think very carefully about where you're going to place your first castle. This is going to be your base of operations for quite some time, so placing your base near one of the two crypts that you start in might not be the best call for the long term. You'll find yourself having to travel quite far to get to locations you'll need to visit within Farbane Woods for both resources and to defeat bosses known as V-Bloods. I'd instead recommend finding a location that's either relatively central in the Farbane Woods or towards the north end of Farbane Woods, so that you're prepared when you decide to travel to the next area, and don't have a huge trek ahead of you when you decide to step into that next zone. Now, these are just my recommendations, and there are plenty of basing opportunities out there in the world of Vardoran. Plus, you'll be able to make castles later on if you want to reposition or extend your reach. However, I found it incredibly helpful during the beta to have our castle in a central location that cut down travel times in the early stages. Now, when you find the right spot for your castle, I'd also suggest claiming as much border space as you can within your allowance for a level 1 castle. You'll be able to upgrade later and get more border space, but for now, your priority is making sure that you claim all of the space available to you, to ensure that no other players can ruin your expansion plans. Now with that in mind, you probably don't want to claim a location right next to another player either, otherwise you'll both be inhibited in the way that you can expand your bases, and will be fighting for land. Soon after placing your first base, you'll also gain access to a mist brazier. This will block out the sunlight in a local area and is great for using around your base until you're able to build stone walls and floors to put a roof over your head. Just remember to turn the brazier off at night to save on some resources. Oh, and speaking of roofs and floors, most benches in the game will benefit from being both in a closed room and on the correct floor type. For example, a sawmill produces 25% faster in a confined castle room and uses 20 25% less resources when placed on a workshop floor. This goes for pretty much all of the benches as you expand your castle, so try to allocate different rooms as you go. The benches will only benefit from the floor bonus if that entire room is the same floor type, so separate rooms are going to be needed. Alright, so now that you're out of the crypt and you've got your first castle sorted out, let's look at the blood system. Vampire society runs on blood, and you, being a vampire, are no different. You'll start with the frailed blood type type, which gives you no bonuses and essentially is trying to tell you that you should feed in order to gain a proper buff. Each enemy type has a different blood type, such as rogue, warrior, creature, or brute. There are others, but they will come in later. Each of these blood types will provide you with a different set of buffs, so don't be afraid to try them and see which one you prefer. Now when an enemy is on low health, you'll be prompted to press F to feed. Keep in mind that when you do this, you can still be attacked and damaged, so you'll want to make sure that you're saving the enemy you want to 
feed on until last wherever possible. Enemies show their blood type and their blood quality at the top of your screen when you hover your cursor over them. The higher the blood quality percentage, the more buffs you'll gain from draining them. I won't go into too much detail on this in this video, but try to scan an area for high blood quality enemies before starting a fight to make sure that you're not passing up an opportunity for some good buffs. Your blood pool is shown at the center lower half of your screen and will slowly decline over time. It will decline at a faster rate if you decide to use blood mend, which is on your left control menu. This heals you at the expense of your blood pool, so keep an eye on your blood levels and don't let it sink too low before you feed again. Just a bit of a tip for when you're getting started with building as well, consider going out to locations nearby to look for some worker blood types. If you can find one, you'll harvest resources in higher quantities and at a faster rate if the blood quality is good enough. You can also use the expose vein ability from the left control menu to allow your friends to share the same blood you currently have. However, it will drain your blood pool significantly, so you'll have to feed again sooner. This brings us nicely to how your health bar works in V Rising. It's a little different to some games in the sense that as you lose health, your maximum health can also shrink. You'll see that portions of your health bar become greyed out during combat if you let your health drop too low. This greyed out section can only be recovered outside of combat, so if you're fighting a boss or in a lengthy battle, try to keep your health topped up rather than using healing items only when you're on low health. Again, it's a little different to some games in similar genres, but tends to make those boss fights a little bit more challenging and intense. Now earlier I mentioned V-Bloods, and not too far into the game you'll be asked to fight your first V-Blood as part of your questline, and there will be many, many more to come. These boss fights are V-Rising's way of progressing through both the crafting side of the game and through the acquisition of more spells and abilities. You can track these creatures at the Blood Altar and check out what you gain from each one. So, if you're ever stuck and wondering how to craft something or what to build next, this is a great way to see if you're missing something and what to target. The first few V-Blood encounters are relatively easy, but will become quickly more difficult as the game goes on. They scale to the amount of players around them, so you can bring your friends or go it alone. And as a rule of thumb, make sure you've got a good amount of blood in your pool, a high quality blood pool, and ideally some vermin salve or later healing items to ensure your best chances of vanquishing them. Once you've defeated some V-Bloods, you'll have acquired some new abilities. Now to open the ability panel, you can press J and navigate to each school of ability using the tabs at the top. You can pick one travel ability and two combat abilities. Now your travel ability is essentially your dodge, and the others are either offensive or defensive. Different weapons will also have different skills, and as you progress through the game, these weapons will introduce more skills to you as they're upgraded with new materials. This allows you to build your own class of vampire, whether you want to be a bit tankier, do more damage, or even heal your teammates. You won't need to worry about changing these up too much early on, but what I will say is as you progress, don't be afraid to try different abilities for different boss fights. You might find that some of them are super helpful for particular encounters. So I'd say that's just about everything with regards to core mechanics. However, there are a few things that I found whilst playing the beta, which weren't specifically mentioned that I wish had been. Now with that in mind, I'll fire some of these off at you now and hope that this makes your experience a little bit easier when you jump in. Firstly, keep hold of any of your old armor and weapons. At a certain point, you'll be able to construct a devourer, which is essentially a chest with teeth. You can place your old gear in the devourer and it'll break it down into raw materials. You'll also find gear in the world that you can do the same with. Later, you'll also gain access to servants that can use your gear to increase their power. So again, keep hold of your old stuff to either break it down or empower your vampire servants around you. Staying on the topic of gear, many of the gear recipes you find out in the world will actually come with set bonuses. Now it's not immediately noticeable, but if you hover over the gear itself, you can see having two pieces equipped will grant you a buff, and the same goes for having four pieces. So it makes sense to have a set of the same stuff. Much of this gear is also considered blood bound. This means once constructed, it can only be shared with people within your clan. If you haven't checked out clans yet, this is accessed by pressing P, and the default maximum members of a clan is four. This can be changed on private servers. Now, whilst you're out and about in the world of Vardoran slaying monsters and humans alike, make sure to keep an eye out for furnishings, crates, and chests when around human settlements. Many of these items can either be smashed or looted for unique resources that can only be acquired in those locations or from the 
NPCs inhabiting them. Basically, just go around smashing everything. You never know what you might find. Lastly, there's no real tutorial for fishing in V Rising, so I wanted to drop that in this video just so you understand the basics of how that works. I saw a lot of questions being asked about this in the beta, and it's not immediately obvious how this all functions. So, you can build a fishing rod after constructing a woodworking bench. Place this on your hotbar and equip the fishing rod using the assigned number to get started. Then, all you need to do is check bodies of water for bubbles on the surface. When you spot them, click on it with the fishing rod equipped. This will cast in your line, and from there, there will be little pulses that you want to ignore, and eventually, a larger pulse will occur, and that's when you want to click again to reel in your catch. You can find both fish and other items from fishing, so it's worth doing whilst you're out and about. That's it from me in this one, guys, but if you're interested in seeing more V Rising content from me, I'm actually streaming the game on Tuesday the 17th at 6pm UK time, right here on YouTube. So if you want to check out the game live, just head to my channel's homepage and click on the stream. Any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll aim to answer as many as I can. Once again, do consider dropping the video a like and subscribing as well. And a special thank you to all of my patrons for their ongoing support and gaining access to our new V Rising whitelisted server to play with me and the community. Thanks folks, and I'll see you all in the next one.